So we've had our first quiz. Hopefully you've all done well, or at least as well as expected. Uh, so with that behind us, we are going to start uh, the openness chapters from today. So for the next four weeks, we are going to be focused on openness. Uh, so let's just first talk about that idea, the idea of openness and exactly what does that mean. So everything that we've done so far in both Eco 207 and the first three chapters of 209 is that we've assumed that whatever country we're looking at is operating in an autarky or let's say a closed economy, uh, which one way of saying that is that a country that does not trade with anyone else, or you may say a country that uh, produces only what it needs and I mean no more. It doesn't buy anything from another country, neither does it sell anything to someone else. Of course, you guys realize that, that, that even without us talking about it, is that in reality, the world is uh, much more deeply integrated. Uh, the economies of the world are very strongly, very deeply interconnected. And uh, not only that, but as you will see in this diagram, is that the performance of various economies around the world even tends to move together. So not only are we in an interconnected world, but you see that when there is growth, the world grows together both the advanced countries in blue in this diagram and the emerging and developing countries in lavender. When there is a recession, we suffered the recession together right here. When there is growth, we experience the growth together. And so overall, the assumption that a country is operating in autarky obviously is not very real, very realistic one. Uh, we can also see in this second diagram that I have, uh, this shows the import and exports as a percentage of GDP for USA. You see that starting from 1960s, where the rates were around 5% for both import and export, today they, they are much higher. They're both more than 10% of their GDP. Uh, so what does that tell us? It tells us that over time, countries are starting to trade with each other even more. Because notice that this is import as a percentage of GDP. This export as a percentage of GDP. From 1960 to 2014, US GDP has grown. It has grown a lot. And despite this growth in GDP in the denominator, the numerator has grown much, much faster, which is why these tables, this, uh, these curves that you see have, uh, have grown over time. Uh, so that means that not only is the countries of the world deeply interconnected, but this interconnectedness is uh, getting stronger over time. We buy from a lot of countries, we sell from a lot of countries. So in this chapter and the next three, so chapter 17 and 20 together, what we are going to do is we're going to introduce openness into our model. Okay, here's a little task for you guys. Uh, this obviously is for USA right here. Find the data for Bangladesh and see what the diagram looks like for Bangladesh and try to interpret it. Okay, it's just something fun to do. But for now, let's uh, start talking about openness. And this chapter is effectively divided into two parts. First part, we're going to talk about openness in the goods market. And in the second part, we'll talk about openness in the, uh, in the financial market. So effectively, let's talk about the dimensions of openness, okay? So openness uh, has three dimensions. One is, of course, openness in the goods market. We all have experience in that. Just look at all the things that you use every day or things that you buy when you go to a shop. 
a very few of them are actually produced in Bangladesh. Most of the things that we buy are from other countries. So that's an aspect of openness. As consumers, we can decide, we have the option to buy local or domestic or buy international or let's say foreign. So this is one aspect of openness. The second aspect is, of course, openness in the financial markets. So, of course, by financial markets, we mean like uh, when we're dealing with stocks, bonds, etc. Right? So, once again, when we have openness in the financial market, we can either hold local bonds or stocks. Let's, let's call them financial assets. So, we can either hold local financial assets that will be quoted in local interest rate or we can uh, have we can hold international financial assets uh, so if i for example take some of my money and invest it in the new york stock exchange that's an example of openness in the financial markets or the reverse might happen someone from uh, let's say usa might invest in bangladesh uh, invest in Dhaka Stock Exchange. That's an example of financial openness in the financial market. And third, we have openness in the factors market. Factors, of course, mean the things that you need. Like, remember, when we talked about GDP, we said that we're only concerned with final products, not intermediate products. Factors effectively refers to raw materials, uh, etc. So the things that we need to produce a good. Uh, so uh, what? deciding whether you want to hire workers from India or workers from Bangladesh. That's an example of openness in the factor market if you have the option of hiring people from another country or if you have a factory and you if you are planning to open a factory and you decide uh, you have the option of deciding whether you want to open this factory in Malaysia in Thailand or in Bangladesh that's an example of having openness in the factors market is that you get to decide uh, where your uh, factory will be located so these are the three dimensions of uh, openness. In this chapter, we are primarily going to focus on the first two, goods market and the financial market.